There is an argument from politicians and from the media that the UK, and more specifically the youth justice system of England and Wales, has a youth crime problem. And I'd say this is not the case. The youth crime problem, in inverted commas, is a social construction, largely driven by politicians. They've created the image, the representation of a problem, and exaggerated the extent and nature of youth crime to the point that it's seen as a problem. The media has conspired in this. This has had a knock-on effect to how academics have studied and represented the problem and how the public have understood youth crime. But to call youth crime a problem is an exaggeration and it links back to the inherently socially constructed nature of youth crime. So politicians particularly have created the illusion of a problem through the way that they've defined youth crime. For example, by lowering the age of criminal responsibility to 10 in 1998 so that more and more young people could be convicted of a crime, could be considered to be youth offenders. A whole new cohort of 10 to 13 year olds were brought into the remit of youth offending. This is called net widening. So they've net widened the definition of what constitutes a young offender, what constitutes youth offending, as well as consistently, the government have consistently added new behaviours into the mix, historically, that can be considered to be youth offending, including, uh, historically, what we call status offences, which can only be committed by young people. So in the past, truancy or, or sexual precociousness, for example. So widening the remit of what's considered a youth offender and the behaviours that are considered youth offending expands the definition of crime and exacerbates the perception of a problem. Similarly, the way that we explain youth crime perpetuates this illusion of a problem. The currently dominant explanation of youth crime represents young people as risky and dangerous and in need of control, rather than historical representations of children as innocent and vulnerable and in need of care. So the way that we represent these young people feeds into academic and public and political and media representations of young offenders as problematic, as difficult, as dangerous, as evil in some cases. Again, fueling the perception of a problem. But youth crime statistics over the past 10 years and certainly since around 2006, 2007, have demonstrated that their extent and nature of youth crime is falling year on year. The number of young people coming into the youth justice system is falling annually. The amount of offences falling annually. The amount of young people going into custody falling. Reoffending rates falling. So statistically, evidentially, there isn't a problem. There's an issue. Youth crime is a reality. But to call it a problem is a misrepresentation. And similarly, the third point of the triad of criminology definitions, explanations, is responses. So how we define and explain youth crime as a problem has fed into and fueled our responses to youth crime, which are, or have been in the last 10 years, dominated by responses, responses to risk, trying to control, trying to surveil, trying to intervene earlier and earlier in the lives of young people, to correct them to resolve their so-called deficiencies. And this is a very good example of the triad of criminology, how definitions, explanations and responses work together. And these responses to these so-called deficient and dangerous young people further perpetuate the illusion of a problem. So the youth crime problem is a self-fulfilling prophecy that is self-fulfilled by each point of the triad of criminology. But do we have a youth crime problem? No.